All right, ladies and gentlemen, please settle down. Please. I promise you, we'll all have a chance to speak, but if we all talk at once, we won't get anything done. Harvey? You know, I don't mean to sound paranoid, but, well, it took me 20 years to earn enough money to buy my home here, and now this happens. This is exactly what I was trying to get away from. It's like some kind of conspiracy. Oh, I know, I don't think, I don't think it's a conspiracy, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. Um, when you, when you get past the fear and the emotionalism, I think what it really boils down to is a matter of dollars and cents. I've been a real estate agent long enough to know that if we don't really do something right now, that our property value could drop as much as 30%. And we can't afford Look, that. What matters to me are my kids. I have two teenagers, two daughters, and I cannot sleep at night worrying about them. Believe me, Vera, I'm with you. I've got a nine-year-old boy. I feel the same way both of us do. Excuse me, Mrs. Ballard. I'm sorry I'm late, but uh, may I say something, please? I'd like to explain my position. You're interrupting a meeting. We know what your position is. This is a private meeting of a neighborhood association, members only. But I am a member, right, Mrs. Ballard? Well, when, when, when you asked to join, I didn't know that you but were... But you did ask me to join, didn't you? And I did pay my dues. You said you were going to move in here with your family. That's what we call each other. That's how we relate. But you're not a family, not according to a legal definition. So you can't legally belong. Well, I doubt if there's anything in your bylaws to support that. <laughs> then we'll damn well amend them. We don't want you in our association. And we don't want your crazies running our streets. You're right. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, come on now, hard pull it. My God, I wish you people could hear yourselves. <laughs> here goes Thatcher again. Yeah, here goes Thatcher again. And the first thing he's going to do is apologize for some of the rudeness he's just heard. Not for me. Oh, well, speak for yourself, Lou. But by the same token, Mr. Carling, I'm asking you to put yourself in our shoes. If you were a normal homeowner here, wouldn't you be just a little concerned by the presence of eight mentally ill people? They are not mentally ill. They are mentally retarded. Oh, what's the difference? There's quite a difference, ma'am. They're not psychotic, they're not neurotic, and they're not crazy. Their bodies have grown up, but their minds have not. They're like innocent children. Mr. Carlin, it doesn't really matter how you describe them. Their presence in this neighborhood is going to diminish property value. Well, if that's I a doubt threat. if property value is going to drop unless you people panic and start selling recklessly. And you don't have to do that if you just try to accept us. Oh. Oh, why should we accept you? I mean, don't you think that those of us with children just have some cause for concern? No, not a bit. They're perfectly safe. According to whom? Me, and I know what I'm talking about. Oh, do you have children of your own? No, ma'am, I've never married, but I consider the eight young men I live with to be my children. I am talking about your own flesh and blood, normal kids. Now, maybe when you have some of your own, Mr. Expert, you just might change your tune. Well, I'll admit that Vera, I'm being Vera. Makes it a little difficult. Where are you going? I'm talking to you. I'm wanted on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Peter Carling. I've brought along some pamphlets, if you pass them among you that will explain the aims and goals of the uh, uh, foundation. Now, I've been working with mentally retarded people for nearly eight years now, and I can tell you I've seen them loud, I've seen them get upset, sometimes even uh, boisterous, but I have never once seen them act maliciously or cause anyone any harm or do anything that would make them objectionable to this community. Well, I'm not sure you're right, but then I'm not sure you're wrong either. What I think we need is more time. Now, I recommend that we wait. Well, you can wait a little, but not I. That was Chris, my 16-year-old daughter. She was getting undressed, and one of his freaks was standing outside of the window staring at her. Oh. Oh. Not oh. harmful, oh. huh? Oh. Oh. Now that's the last try. I'll be all over town after everyone's kids, I guess. Oh. 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 In our society, we tend to exclude from consciousness anything that's demanding or unpleasant. We even do this to people when they reveal things about ourselves that we'd rather not face. This is the way it is with the retarded. They remind us that we're all a little retarded. We're not as smart as we'd like to be. And we may be more innocent and vulnerable than we're willing to admit. We're ashamed of this childlike side of ourselves. 
And so we repress it, we drive it from consciousness. Because the retarded activate this side of ourselves and make us aware of how needy and limited we actually are, we tend to avoid them. This is a mistake, because we need this awareness, and only the retarded can give it to us. We need the retarded for something else, too. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it won one of us. Yes. Oh, come on, gentlemen. we got to find a way to solve this problem. Yeah. Wait a minute, Peter. So. I got an idea. We can invite him for a party. No, I think it's a no. little too soon for that, Walter. Well, Why too soon? Too, too. Parties are fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Wait a minute now. They don't know us yet, so they don't know what good neighbors we are. Oh, we can tell them. Yeah, but they're not really ready to listen. They're having a little trouble accepting us, you see. And after what happened tonight, gentlemen, they are pretty upset. What do you think we should do? Well, I thought you people would come up with some suggestions. Yeah, I suggested a party. I mean, besides that, Walter. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Maybe we ought to think of uh, who it was who was looking through the window at that girl. Well, what about that? Is it cool? Well, now, do you think that would help? It would probably make the person feel better if he told us. Oh, it could also make him feel real bad, too. Now, Frank, I'm the vice president of this family. I was elected by majority. So I want to know who caused us so much trouble tonight. All right, Walter, well, you may be vice president, but this is still a democracy, and we usually arrive at our decisions together. All right, what do you say, gentlemen? Is it important to have the person tell us? Yeah. 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 That's a majority, mm -hmm. Peter. It certainly is, Walter. <laughs> All right. Will the person we're talking about please let us know? Gil? No. Charlie? No. Mark? No, sure. Frank? Uh, I didn't do it. Billy? No. Neil? No. Tom? Walter? Uh, not me, no. Well, it looks like nobody did it. <laughs> Maybe we ought to hire a detective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got a better idea. Why don't we sleep on it for tonight and see how we feel in the morning? All right. Yeah. Uh, Peter, may I say the prayer tonight? You can for sure, Frank. Come on. Everybody join hands then. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this good day. Thank you for our new house. Thank you for letting us all live together and really being a family. God, please do something nice for our new neighbors. We hope they don't get too mad about what happened. We're sorry about any bad things that we've done, but we know you'll forgive us. And well, I guess that's about all. Amen. Oh, 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 except that we love you. Amen. 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 All right, gang, let's hit the sack. Everybody right, upstairs. Hey, everybody brushes their teeth tonight. I don't want to find the caps off the tubes. No soap on the floor or towels either. Come on now, let's go. Lights out in 15 minutes. No radios after dark. And remember to turn off the faucets, OK? We fell behind a little on production today, so we're going to start a learning tomorrow. Frank, right. let me talk to you a second. Yeah. Hey, that was a very nice prayer. Yeah, I liked it, too. Was there something you wanted to tell me, Frank? No. What would I have to tell you? I don't know. I thought maybe you uh, wanted to get something off your chest. Why do you ask me that? I'm sorry, uh, Frank. Could have been now. Stop picking on me. I hate it when people pick on me. I'm sorry. You're bugging me, Peter. Okay. Go to bed. <laughs> Peter? Morning. You got a minute? Um, all right. C come in. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Troutman. 
No, the house has two bedrooms, but there is a den you can convert into a nursery. I'd be more than happy to come and show it to you after lunch. 1.30. That's terrific. Thank you very much. Bye. Hey, sorry to barge in on you, but it's about last night. Yes? Mrs. Ballard, I'd like you to meet one of the boys, Frank McFay. Oh, Miss Ballard. How do you do? Fine, but I'll be a lot better after I tell you something. Is this... He'd like to explain, please. <sighs> all right, all right, sit down, but please, I have appointments. No, it won't take a minute, I promise. Go ahead, Frank. Well, what happened is... Well, I really like to go for walks, and while well, last night was so pretty that I couldn't help myself, and I broke one of the house rules. You see, we have a self-imposed 7 o'clock curfew. We all voted for it by a majority. Uh, Walter's Frank, the vice... Just tell Mrs. Ballard about last night, okay? Well, the reason I broke the rule is because I wanted to see the stars and the moon. Mm -hmm. You're sure that's all you wanted to see? Oh, yes, ma'am. I, I walked for a long time on the hill up there where the trees are. It was real pretty. Well, after I had gotten enough of seeing everything at night, I, I wanted to get back down to the street. And, well, I, I got lost for a moment. I, I walked between these two houses there, and, well, I, I shouldn't have done that. It, it was all muddy there. Yeah, now, explain what happened when you saw the girl. Oh, uh... Uh, there was this girl inside, and she screamed at me. Look, Mr. Carling, I spoke to Chris Anderson this morning. I heard her side of the story. This boy was standing outside her window. No, no, I, I wasn't standing. I was just walking by, and she screamed at me, and, and it scared me, and I ran as fast as I could. That is not what Chris said. Uh, honest! Uh, Frank, honest! Frank, it's I'm... all right. You told the truth. That's all that's important. Peter. Thanks very much for your time, Mrs. Bowie. Peter, Let's go. I, Mr. Carling. I think you ought to know that I've discussed this with a lawyer. And as soon as I can get the membership together, I'm going to recommend whatever legal action it takes to force you out of here. Let me give you a big clue about homeowner associations. They're always talking about legal action. 9-6. They want to sue the builders, they want to sue the subcontractors, they want to sue the architects. For some reason, they want to sue the whole damn world. Well, do they have any real legal grounds, Joe? Well, they could claim you're a hospital. Ah, oh, that's absurd. Well, they could claim you're a factory because you manufacture things. What, handbags and sandals? Does that make us a factory? It might. Depends on how bad they want to put the screws to you. Well, they're out for blood, and that's for sure. Listen, Pete. I don't want to be the one to say I told you so. But when you first came up with this idea, I warned you about moving into a nice middle-class neighborhood. These people think they got too much to lose. Second and Central would have been Second no problem. And Central? Well, the house was oh, decent. Come on, the price was we right. The foundation approved. Second and Central. At least they wouldn't be challenging your right to be my there. My God, man! Muggings, prostitution, gang wars, murders. You know my kids are defenseless. You know they trust everyone they meet. Hang on, I'm on your side. Then how the hell can you suggest I expose oh. them to an area like Second oh, and Central? All right, take it easy. You ask me a question of law, I gave you an honest answer. A little free advice thrown in. Practical advice. We gonna finish the game? Yeah. Where did anyone ever get being practical? Practical people don't even live. No, correction. In most cases, they live longer. They just live pretty damn dull. Ten yeah. six. Stick with me, kid. I promise you a laugh a minute. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Peter, Mark put the buckle on all by himself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, that's terrific, Mark. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Why don't you go finish? <laughs> hey, we're pretty good teachers, huh? Well, who said you weren't? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> hey, Peter, you think you'll ever amount to anything? Well, you never know if you're patient with me. Well, we'll try. But you know, Peter, sometimes you bug me a little bit. I do, huh? Hey, look, don't get mad. I, I was just kidding. <laughs> oh, hey, I'll get no, mad. No, I'll get it. You clowns get back You're to work. Good. You're goofing off long enough. Yeah. Hello. May I talk to you? Sure, come in. Oh, uh... 
excuse the mess. Uh, Major day off. <laughs> Sit down. No, no, this won't take long. Um, we're having an emergency meeting. We'll be voting uh, whether or not to take legal action against you. I see. Well, I'm surprised you're telling me about it. Well, technically, you're a member. Technically? Okay, you are a member. So it's 8 o'clock sharp at my house. Coffee and donuts? If you stay long enough. You know, it's funny. You could have told me about the meeting by phone, or is this what you call a reconnaissance visit? I came by personally so that you would never be able to say that you weren't informed. My lawyer suggested I do that. Good. My lawyer will be there, too. That's the fellows in the workshop. As long as you're here, you might as well satisfy your curiosity. Come on. They don't bite. Hey, everybody. Say hello to Miss Ballard. Hey. Hello, I'm Walter Austin. I'm vice president. What's your name? Jean Ballard. Hello, Mrs. Ballard. You remember Frank? Hello. Good to see you again. Would you like to see my sandals I'm working on? I did the stitching there all by myself, all on that machine there. I'm in nice. charge of this workshop. Having responsibility helps me. I'm making a lot of progress, aren't I, Peter? You are for sure, Walter. I'm very proud of you. You, you see, Mrs. Ballard, we have a contract to sell our sandals to a big shoe company. We all work together, and that way we support ourselves. Huh, Peter? It's very interesting. Yeah, well, we're not going to support ourselves standing around here gabbing. Let's get back to work. You want to see the rest of the house? Bye. Bye. Uh, boy said that you sell those sandals. Yes, ma'am, we do. We have a contract with Magnum Shoes. We make about 200 pairs a month for them. We also make these leather handbags for another outfit. Here, uh, I'd like for you to have one on the house. They're very good looking. Yeah. I'd like to point out, if I may, that uh, there is a machine shop with much more sophisticated equipment right in your own community center. That's strictly recreational. I mean, we don't fulfill any commercial contracts. This area is not zoned for that. What you're doing here is illegal. How can such an intelligent lady like yourself feel so threatened, Mrs. Ballard? Mr. Carling, we liked our neighborhood the way that it was. We went to a lot of trouble to give it an image that we could be proud of. I mean, we have some of the best schools in the city. We have lovely churches, good recreational facilities. Now, I know that what you do has great merit, but I think it would be easier for everyone if you would just do it some other place. Let me ask you a question, may I? In this uh, utopia you're describing, hasn't there ever been one retarded child? Yes, but his parents were considerate enough to put him in a facility that could deal with the problem. An institution? A place with doctors, psychiatrists, I mean, trained attendants. Yes, I know all about them. Institutions that make all the rules and do the thinking and restrict visits and control all contact with the outside world. Well, thank God that they do. And thank God that they had the common sense not to put it in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Mrs. Ballard, I believe with all my heart that these retarded boys have a very great deal to offer this neighborhood. Look, I'll just see give you us a chance. tonight, huh? Oh, and by the way, that boy in there, the peeping Tom, he has a police record. Now, well, now, wait one minute, please. Now, you're referring to an incident that took place three years ago before he joined our group. And before you go off the deep end, I want to explain to you what really happened. Frank was walking home from school one day, minding his own business, when a gang of kids on motorcycles began to tease him. When they nearly ran him over, he picked up a rock in self-defense. But his aim was bad, and the rock ended up going through a $500 plate glass window. Now, the irony here is this. If it had just been a bunch of kids throwing punches and only people got hurt, probably nothing much would have come of it. But property got destroyed. And that, Mrs. Ballard, is what our society considers a very grave sin. People live on property, Mr. Carling. Oh, what is it with you? Why the hell are you so driven? Are you really interested? Please. Fifteen years ago, my husband and I bought a house that we thought we could live in for the rest of our lives. And then someone decided that the only place for their freeway was right next to our backyard. So 10 months later, when we sold the house, we got half what we paid for it. We picked up the pieces. We moved to the Glenwood area. Two years later, the zoning was changed. They started building apartment houses around us. Suddenly, we had 
all kinds of transients. I mean, swinging singles and hippies and the most undesirable types in the world. There were muggings and robberies and dope. My God, a woman was raped in broad daylight three blocks away from my house. You can imagine what we got when we sold out. And do you know why it happened? Because when the problem first started, nobody did a damn thing about it. But I don't intend to lose again. The rest of the people in this area may be passive. But I am going to fight you with every ounce of strength in my body. Why her? Of all people, why'd you have to give her a guided tour? Well, what do you want me to do, Joe? Lock the doors, muffle the hammers, tell everyone to quit breathing every time there's a knock at the front door? Well, you could have claimed that making sandals was therapy or recreation for the boys. I can't do that. I don't operate that way, Joe. Okay. Fine, be a sucker. She'll have you in court so fast it'll make your head spin. Well, first, I assume she has to get the support of the membership, right? Oh, well, that should take, what, 10 seconds? And 10 seconds after she tells them about Frank's police record, they'll all agree that you're harboring dangerous criminals. Well, I'll explain to them about Frank. Well, if you couldn't convince her, how are you going to convince the rest of them? People hear what they want to hear. I'm telling you, pal, if you get up in front of that group, you better be willing to offer them some kind of a compromise. What are you talking about? Figure it out. Oh, come on. If what you're thinking has anything to do with Frank, you gotta be out of your head, Joe. We're a community. We belong together. We need each other. We don't throw somebody the wolves just because there's a little pressure from outside. Well, I'm not talking about wolves. Doesn't he have any parents? Oh, hell yes, he has parents who keep him locked away in a third floor room. We're so embarrassed by his presence, they even feed him his meals up there. Is that what you want me to do, Joe? Send him back to his loving parents? Now, what do you want me to say to you, Pete? You won't move into a neighborhood that'll accept you. You won't compromise to try and stay in this one. What other options do you have? You mind if I give you a little more of my free advice? Do I have any choice? I've known you a long time. You've paid your dues to humanity. It's time you started thinking about Peter Carling for a change. What do you mean? You've got a master's degree in social work. There are plenty of jobs that pay good salaries and don't have nearly as many headaches. Well, I don't have any headaches. Oh, come on. Will you, Pete? You're 32 years old. You don't have a home, a wife, a family. I bet you don't have 10 cents in the bank. Listen, buddy. There's a book called The Sanity of Selfishness. You ought to read it. Maybe then you'd realize that a person's required by natural law to indulge himself every once in a while. I have read that book, Joe. Uh, so? So, do you have any idea what would happen if I quit on these boys now? You're one guy. You can't solve all the world's problems. And you can't be responsible for everyone who was born retarded. No, I can't. But I'll tell you something. These boys are happier and more fulfilled now than they've ever been in their lives, and so am I. I'm not about to send them back to institutions or back to loving parents who keep them locked away in third floor rooms. What you gotta try to understand, Joe, is that um, uh, this wasn't my idea. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's say God did lead you into this. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe all these problems are his way of telling you it's time to get out? Yeah, it's occurred to me. They've ruined the atmosphere of the community. They're illegally operating a factory, and now this, this, this peeping Tom incident. And to top it all off, we have found out that that boy has a police record. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like that? Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest faults of a democratic society is the apathy of its people. And it's just as true in a group like this. When a problem arises, we think we can't do anything, so we just sit back and we let ourselves be used. 
This is where we live. It's where we raise our children. And if we want to keep the community the way it was, then we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and fight. Well, that's why we're here. Let's set some brown rolls and go to work on this thing. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I just came by to tell you that one of your problems has already been solved. Frank McFay, the young man Mrs. Ballard may have described to you as being a hardened criminal, packed his bag and left our home tonight. None of us saw him go, so I can only speculate that by voluntarily removing himself, he was hoping to ensure that his friends, the people he loved, would be able to remain in this community. Oh, it's a damn shame. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Carling, but I mean, it really is kind of beside the point, isn't it? Please, let me finish. Less than an hour ago, Frank tried to cross a freeway and was struck down and killed by an automobile. Uh, naturally, we at the home feel a very great loss because he gave us so much. In the end, he even gave us his own life. You see, the mentally handicapped revealed to us something tremendously important about ourselves, a very beautiful side of ourselves, an innocence and a vulnerability that we too often tend to suppress. I think that's a mistake, even in this so-called sophisticated society of ours. And the mentally handicapped, in their innocence and their purity, reveal it to us. Another thing we learn from them is love. They have a magnificent capacity for it. I have never met a mentally retarded person who cared about wealth or power or the value of a piece of real estate. They're motivated by love, pure and simple. They have time to look and to think and to marvel at the things they see. They have time to give without asking anything in return. They're valuable to us because they are living proof that hope, faith, and joy have nothing to do with material success. Now, I think we all need to be reminded of that sometimes. And finally, I feel that the mentally handicapped reveal God to us. Some of you are church-going people, and you're proud of it, I'm sure, which you should be. But I want to tell you something. If you can't find God in the people around you, particularly in the weak and vulnerable ones, you're never going to find him at all. Excuse me. Now won't you tell each little child to come unto me? Each has a heart that's pure and mild, each one I wish to see. And if Child 